What's going on guys? Today I want to talk about the importance of lifting numbers as a drug free lifter. So here's the thing, right? I get a lot of comments from people in my training videos saying, Alex, why are you always talking about the numbers? It seems to me like that's the only thing you care about. You're saying, okay, now you did this PR, that PR. Like, dude, why don't you just lighten the weight a little bit, focus on the muscles and stop talking about the numbers. Just give us the movements, but not the numbers. When I hear these comments, it really, it kind of makes me sad because you guys have been exposed to so much misinformation out there. Like you sincerely believe that you could just use any weight you want and that you're going to get big. And to me, like, it, it's just mind blowing that people actually believe this. What you have to understand is that as a drug free lifter, the only way to get big is to get stronger. That's right. I'm not saying you got to be Mr. Power Lifter, but you do have to focus on strength development and numbers are what's going to guide you there. Whether it be increasing a set, increasing a rep, increasing something, the weight, you got to get stronger over time. This is one of the most basic concepts ever, progressive overload. So if you're benching 135 for reps, you're going to have a small fucking chest, period. And if you know someone who has a big chest doing that, it's not because of his secret training method. It's not because he found out the revolutionary secret. No, it's because he has good genetics for chest. That's why a lot of these uh, YouTubers in fitness, they have good physiques. Because of genetics. If you see a guy who is weak as fuck, weak to the limit, there are two things going on. One, he's on drugs, which is very, very common. Or two, he has good genetics for looking big. But guess what? You're not in that position. And if you are, fuck off, man. I don't want to hear your comments saying, well, I, I bench 185 and my pecs are fucking huge. Fuck you, man. Fuck you. I don't care what you do. My advice is for the majority of drug-free lifters, average genetics. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Seriously, man. I'm tired of these genetic outliers coming to my comment section. I'm trying to help people here, all right? I'm trying to bring on change for the majority of you. And for the majority of you, you're not going to have big pecs lifting bitch weight. You're not going to have a big back lifting bitch weight. You won't. You need to focus on strength development, and therefore, numbers is everything. Num without, without numbers, you got nothing. Without numbers, you might as well quit lifting weights. Real talk. And think about this. If taking your bench press from 135 to 315, five, paused, doesn't get you jacked, what the fuck else will? Seriously, what else is gonna get that done for you? Is, is doing lightweight dumbbell flies really gonna cut it? Squeezing the shit out of your muscles? Please. It's human physiology. You go from point A to point B, your muscles being worked. All you gotta do now is increase the performance. That's how you gain size. Now, like I said, I'm not saying you gotta be Mr. Powerlifter. You can increase uh, the performance in other ways, whether it be increasing sets and reps, uh, total workload, etc. But the point is, you need continual improvements over time. And numbers, it's what's going to guide you there. Numbers will take care of that. Even if you train by intuition, you still need numbers. Numbers is the foundation by which you make progress as a drug free lifter. So if you keep asking me, Alex, how come you always talk about your numbers in your training? Well, it's because it's everything. If I didn't have numbers, I would quit lifting weights. For real, I would just do calisthenics because at least with calisthenics, you could focus on certain moves, certain skill progressions. You know, like you might be going from a, a tucked planche into a full planche, you know. That's one example right there. You don't actually need the numbers. You just need something else. But guess what? With lifting weights, you're doing a movement that requires numbers. It's not your body weight. So you, you can't factor that in. You know what I'm saying? So you best believe numbers are everything. If Every time you reach a new strength milestone, you will see muscular development occurring in your body. Yes. So if you take your deadlift to two plates to six plates, uh, your whole posterior chain, your whole back as a whole is, is going to increase like crazy. No question about it. You increase, you increase your overhead press from 135 to 225, your shoulders are going to get bigger. Your long headed triceps is going to get bigger. You take your rack pull from 700 pounds to 1,000 pounds, upper back and traps are going to explode. And that's how it was for me, by the way. Remember when I used to have the smallest traps in YouTube fitness? Well, I took my rack pull from 725 to 1,105 pounds. And as you can see, it had tremendous effects on my muscular development. I didn't focus on uh, slow and controlled. I didn't focus on uh, muscle squeezing and all this bullshit. I focused on strength. I focused on numbers. That's the only thing that counts. Numbers. If you don't have numbers, you got nothing. Now, I can already hear some people saying, well, Alex, um, how come powerlifters are smaller than bodybuilders? Well, number one, you're not talking about the drug-free ones. Have you ever seen a drug-free powerlifter? If you compare them to the size of a drug-free bodybuilder, they're pretty much the same size. There's literally no difference, except that the powerlifter tends to be a little bit stronger because he's doing more intensity work. In fact, how about you look at the bodybuilders from the old school era? Powerlifters and bodybuilders, they would kind of compete together, and they look similar. They were both very functional. They were both, uh, very, they were both high-performing athletes in a sense, you see? 
and you look at the physiques, didn't really look that much different. There are a few noticeable changes. Like if you look at Steve Reeves compared to John Grimick, you'll see like John has bigger legs. He's a bit stockier, but they're both, uh, they're both very massive. What you're going to see in terms of aesthetic differences is, like I said, the outer quad sweep. Like the powerlifters can have much bigger legs. They're going to have block your waist, higher body fat percentage, uh, less upper chest, less side down. But in terms of uh, lean body mass, uh, you're not going to see too much of a difference in real uh, drug-free powerlifters and bodybuilders. The, the problem today is that you guys are not being exposed to uh, naturals. You're being exposed to guys who are lying about their drug use and claiming that it's their secret training methods that's giving them this look. No, it's called injecting uh, three times a week or whatever. Whatever the stack may be. There's tons of varieties out there, you know. But you'd be surprised how much shit these guys are on. And that's why people are making gains using bullshit weights, using bitch weight. It's called drugs, man. But if you look at real natural powerlifters and bodybuilders, the size is pretty much, it's identical for the most part. And you know why? Because powerlifters do volume work, okay? They don't just do fucking singles. That's a terrible misconception. Whenever someone, if you hear a guy saying, you know, you're not a powerlifter, you shouldn't do warmer matches, that's all these guys do, you don't know what you're talking about. Because in all periodization programs, volume and intensity is managed. Go tell that to a raw powerlifting champion that all you should do is singles. They're going to laugh in your fucking face. What they do is both. They have, they typically, like, they don't, some of them do concurrent, like myself, but others they do linear, others do uh, undulating, but the point is, they are using weights that go within the force velocity relationship of weights. Again, talking about numbers, see? <laughs> they gotta manipulate volume and intensity. It's the same thing as what bodybuilders do. The only difference is, they have intensity work included. Bodybuilders don't typically do reps uh, below three. You see my point? But, if you look at their training as a whole, it's pretty much the same, the same fucking shit. When they're doing their volume cycles, it's the same thing as what bodybuilders do. Same thing, just a little bit less emphasis to certain weak points because they're not trying to go for the aesthetics. They're really trying to look for a joint-specific performance. But again, the point remains, they are focusing on the numbers, they're doing volume work, and of course, the drug-free ones are big. Yes, they are. So that's it, man. I hope this video clarifies why I'm always focusing on numbers. Like, I, in my opinion, man, without numbers, you, you, you're you fucking nothing. You got nothing, period, unless you got good genetics. If you got good genetics, great for you, but it's not going to work for most guys. And for most guys, you got to focus on progressive overload, taking your, your squat, bench, deadlift, or whatever lift you're trying to improve on, and take it to the next level. Take your bench to 135 to 3 plates. Take your overhead press from 1 to 2 plates. Take your deadlift from 3 to 6 plates. Take your squat from 2 to 5 plates. That is going to have a more profound effect on anything that you can do in the gym than all this fluff and pump bullshit. Focus on strength, focus on the numbers, your body will sculpt itself naturally. I can promise you that. And if it doesn't, you probably don't have the genetics to do it. No matter, like, no bodybuilding training is going to take care of you. I guarantee you. If you can't get big from what I'm saying in this video, you're fucked, period. You might as well get on some drugs. Although I don't condone drugs. So that's it for this video. Give me your feedback down below. I want to know. And with that, I will talk to you all next time.